So I'm here. I'm on a bus. I uh, spent the day. I had to get up at 6:30. Go to. We're going to Milford Sound in New Zealand. And you know we have all these bus breaks, and I'm just meeting a bunch of new people. And the um, bus driver is uh, talking to this guy named Jack, and he has binoculars. And he starts talking about birding. And and you know if you're watching this video and you haven't seen the big year or you haven't heard me talk about birds, then it might not make a lot of sense. But you can at least see this guy's passion for birds, and it, and, and hopefully it makes you laugh and brings you joy. But if you've experienced um, the birding and the big year and what we've been doing with that and how we uh, use it as a means of just stepping out by faith and it doesn't matter about the outcome but a bird is just like taking a step and going for something so that's been kind of a theme for the last four years well then I meet this family and um you know this is the son Matt of, of, of a birder he's been his dad's been birding for 30 years and so you're about to see what unfolded on this. How long have we been on this bus for? Like nine hours today? Ridiculous. Yes. We were, it's like an hour and a half boat tour, but you ride on a bus for like nine hours. So I've met a lot of people, and you're about to see what's going to happen with um, birding and a guy that loves birding and is grinding for birds. Here we go. You ready for this? And the family that doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm generally shy, but I'll try to overcome my shyness. This, you're a birder. That's right. You guys will not believe this. I met a birder. <laughs> What's your name? Jack Swellstead. And where are you from? Uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. This guy is a true birder. Tell us how many birds you've had this year. It's it's December 27th, and what's your bird count at right now? It's 1,006 world birds. World birds. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you how did you get into birding? Uh, I don't know, always interested in them and uh, met some people that were doing some hardcore birding and kind of took off from there. That's awesome. Have you ever seen any bird fallout? Oh, sure. Yeah, where at? I'm surprised you know that. <laughs> <laughs> I am passionate about birds in this different way. You don't even know. Like, I am like, you know. I've, uh, I've seen uh, fallouts in a number of different locations, but probably the one... The ones that I see the most are at the southern tip of Lake Michigan. Uh huh. You know, when you get a really bad weather and the birds are coming in and they're, they're feeding on the ground and uh -huh. that sort of thing. But yeah. So, if you, what's the most birds you've ever had in one year? Is this year your biggest year you've had? It's my biggest year. That's impressive. Over a thousand birds. Can you yeah. believe that? Yeah. What's your most rare bird? Well, uh, on the, my last trip to Columbia, just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> the hell with the interview. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's birding while he's interviewing me right now, you know? Or while I'm interviewing him. Actually, I went to a symposium and they have a comedian who's a birder. Uh huh. He was talking about things and he said that, that uh, you know, among you birders, if you're having a conversation with somebody, you suddenly stop in mid sentence and look at something. He goes, that's not normal. <laughs> It is to us. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But anyways, what, um, what was the question? Mo most unique bird. Oh, uh, on my Columbia trip, we uh, saw a bird that was thought to be extinct uh -huh. for about the last eighty years. Uh huh. And uh, just last year, it was rediscovered. So there's like uh, maybe twenty of them that they know about. What about what what about like what what's the hardest? Do you ever just totally have to grind for birds? Just like get nap, like like really work hard, like you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah like yeah. when I get back from this trip, I'll be home nine days, and then I'm going to uh, South Korea and Cambodia. Uh huh. When you're when you're birding in the uh, jungles, it's pretty rough. Wow. Yeah. That would be what I call grinding for birds. Yeah. Yeah. What's... When was the last time you visited your kids? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have kids. <laughs> so have you ever gone for an official big year? Is that like a term no, in birding? No no, no? no, I'm too old for that. You're too old for that? What is, for a kid. What is the family thinking about your bird passion? Um, most of them are not <laughs> birders. They think it's stupid. Uh-huh. Yeah, but anyway, so. I love birding. It's Jack, right? That's right. Jack is my first uh, official birder first interview birding and this is like you know just amazing that yeah. 
I got the meta. Some guy not that only, loves not birds. Normally a good burger, but I'm good looking. Yes, you <laughs> are. Yeah, you can tell. I've never had someone film me and like film you while I'm being interviewed. This is awesome. See, we got a, we got a, go. we got someone filming yeah. this transaction. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much yeah, for uh, sharing you. it. And what's, uh, what's your have a great name? day, Ryan. Ryan. Okay, I like that. Okay, have a great day. Yeah. What is the family thinking about your bird passion? Uh, most of them are not birders. They think it's stupid. Uh huh. Yeah, but anyway, so. I love birding. You guys, you guys haven't seen any more birds since we uh, last talked. No, well, I saw a lot of birds, but they're not new ones. Not new ones. No. Where, where did Jack? Where did you? Uh, where do you store your birds? How do you keep track of all your birds? Put them on eBird. eBird. Tell me about eBird. It's uh, an enormous international database for uh, bird sightings. Uh -huh. And um, oh, it, it's uh, all countries now. Uh, it was started in 2003, and I think there's been uh, almost a billion birds submitted to eBird uh, since it was started. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And Matt, you you kind of uh, embrace birding based on like just kind of default. Like, tell me about your seat situation on the bus. Like, you were spotting for him. Tell me about that. Well, he can only see on one side of the bus at a time, so he posts me on the other side so I can look on the other side. It's better not to sit with him, but to find birds for him. Yeah. And you, you tell me about your, your other brother who he's really good at hearing birds, but you're really yes. good at spotting birds visually. Tell me about that. Well, I was just going to say that uh, most <laughs> birders, when they start, are visual. Okay. You know, you look at the book and you look at the bird and that sort of thing. But then after a while, they start to get into auditory birding. Uh-huh. So let's say you get out of your car and maybe you walk 100 yards and you bird 20 birds. Uh-huh. You can put them on your list. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Jason has extremely good uh, hearing. He also has an auditory memory. Uh huh. He's heard a bird before he remembers hearing it, whereas I don't. You don't. But you can make. Um, Matt was saying you can make some bird noises. Like you can, you can <laughs> replicate. I'm not going to do it. Okay, but you can. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, so some. you, so you got some techniques, like. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot of, um, of uh, apps out there for bird songs. Uh huh. And um, I was just gonna show you here. This is iBird Pro. iBird Pro. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got iBird Pro. Now this is North American birds. Okay. This is North like, American yeah, birds. Yeah. Like if I want the Acadian flycatcher, I uh -huh. want the sounds. Uh huh. And then I can you know. You could just sound. pick a sound. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is taking birding to a whole new level. Yeah. Like you can hear the songs on an it sounds on an app now. Isn't that he can't he can't program me on anything to you know, back in the old days like a VCR, but he can he can definitely find any bird at any time, <laughs> any song on any app. That's a, that's amazing. I, I just I can't even get over it. I can't believe you guys are spotting too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great hobby. It's yeah. all I can do to have a relationship with them. Yeah, like I think that's a Eurasian uh, blackbird. Really? Yeah, you know the uh, song "Four and Twenty Blackbirds Baked in a Pie." Yeah, <laughs> that's from that bird right there. Yeah, they're relatives of uh, of our robins back home, and uh, these were imported from Europe, uh, and now they're all over New Zealand. That's amazing that you could just like have conversation like this interview and then just like spot birds. Oh, like yeah. you just you can multitask well the birds are more important than talking about <laughs> yeah what did you say about your family you, 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 he's got more bird pictures than he does family pictures. yeah he doesn't take pictures of the family he just takes pictures of birds <laughs> and you just like now you like know so much what did you say to me on the on the bus that you know more about birds i know i probably know more than anybody else on the bus about birds than, than him <laughs> except for him and it's, it's not because i want to <laughs> just to connect with your dad. To connect See, it's that yeah, connection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, birding, connection. Birding, is, birding has brought us together. <laughs> birding yeah, has yeah. brought you so together. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing again, guys. Yeah. This is okay. great to meet Part you. Part two. I love it. I wanted to interview one of the sons, Matt. Yeah, he was so. telling me some epic bird lines on the bus that yeah. I just had to write down because I'm laughing so hard. So, <laughs> like bird spotting.
Mm -hmm. I mean, they're strategically breaking down where they sit on the bus so they can best have a chance to bird together. Well, it's important. Yes, yeah. it is. I mean, it matters. It matters. I mean, I was watching you, and you were intently watching out the window. You weren't oh, missing yeah. a beat. I mean, a goal that just flew by is a, a black billed goal, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> this bird, he's more passionate. He could be in the movie. He's more passionate about bird than any of those guys in Big Year. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Bye. You went to a meeting on birding? Yeah, I told him I'd go if he was a speaker. So, so he, so he you talked about cameras and how you take pictures of birds and the cheap cameras. <laughs> yeah, but What's up? Jack, what? And I met a lot of interesting people. And I go to the annual party at the end of, you know, Christmas. There's an annual bird party? Mm -hmm. Where is that at? Nancy's house. Isn't yeah, Nancy's, Nancy's house. house. How many birders go to the bird party at the end of the year? About 30. 30 birders? Yeah. And would you say that most spouses are anti-birders? Militant. Militant. Yeah. Are you, but you're not an anti-birder. As long as he plays pickleball with me, I'll you'll, endorse his birding. You'll endorse his birding? Yeah. But what do you think about it? Yeah, what do you, why don't you go? Oh, I have no interest. Orioles, <laughs> robins, and hummingbirds. That's it. That's it. That's it for you. Mm -hmm. But at least you're supporting Jack and his bird, his birding. I mean, he is passionate about birding. Oh, yeah, he writes articles. It's amazing. He, oh, I went one time, I banded, we banded, we banded, uh, saw what owls. What's that? An owl. It's a small migratory northern owl in, uh, you know, North America. Wow. Most people don't even know they're there, but they come through, you know, they're nocturnal, and uh, they migrate in the, in the fall. Wow. And then back again in the spring. That's amazing. Yeah. However, I do have to warn the new neighbors. I had to warn them that I had a husband that walked around in the morning, uh -huh. around four in the morning with his binoculars. <laughs> And he wasn't looking in the window. You had to warn the neighbors. Because they were new. Yeah. They were new. They didn't know that. Because <laughs> he's out there, what, every morning? Oh, yeah. 4 a.m.? Oh, whatever. And you, the sun comes up. And you'll, you'll like, uh, your son said you'll grind hard for, like, a bird, like, late at night, or even if you have to, climb a mountain to go get a bird. Yeah? Um, earlier in the year, I went to Columbia, and uh, we, it, was, it was difficult packing for the trip, because most of the trip... It's tropical, it's hot, um, it's extremely humid. But one of the birds we went after was the, uh, you know, the uh, let's see, the, uh, I can't remember, it's a helmet crest. It's a hummingbird at uh, 14,700 uh, feet. You, know, uh, you climbed it and got it? Well, we uh, drove up there. Drove up there, okay. Yeah. Wow. So anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. A lot of people don't have hobbies. Yeah, I'm glad that he has some That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, do you have anything else to say, Matt, about your dad's uh, passion for birdie? My mom's a liar. She hates it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. Oh, I have nobody do it. He didn't have birding. What would he do without birding? What would he do without, what, what would he do without birding? What'd you say that he said? Tell me a story about how you said that uh, he uh, he said this isn't a birding trip for New Zealand. <laughs> oh, it's not. This is uh, we invited him on a trip to come to New Zealand to be with our family, our part of the family. And so he he kindly wanted to really remind me that he knows it's not a birding trip, but he would really like to see a kiwi and since they they tend to be nocturnal and they're hard to find because they're, they're flightless so he was hoping that maybe we could charter a guide to take us <laughs> on a private boat to a private island where they've restored kiwis to their native habitat at night <laughs> recognizing it's not a bird trip <laughs> if it's not an inconvenience it would be nice so you're going to try to pull that off even if it's not a bird we're trip. Gonna, we're gonna get we're gonna find a kiwi. We're gonna find a kiwi so we can get to one thousand oh seven. We're gonna probably crush that number by the end of this trip. Oh yeah, there's he a saw, ton of he kiwi, He's just getting going. Illegal. It wasn't illegal. It's it's so it's gonna be free. It can't be at, at the zoo or anything. Right. right. That, oh yeah, it's gonna be free. No restraint. Free flying. 
So you saw a kiwi, but it doesn't. Free running. But it doesn't count because it's got to be free. Yeah. The bird's got to be free. It can't be in captivity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Don't let them distract you. Those geese might be out your dad. Oh, they're checking it out. They're checking for geese. No, no illegal birding. No, 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 no. They don't count if they're not, if they're not if they're not if they're in captivity already. That's correct. We can't have illegal illegal birding. Yeah. So even though he's seen a kiwi, he won't count it because it's not. It doesn't follow the rules. I mean, what do you think about your dad's big year this year? I mean, a thousand birds is a lot of birds in a year. I'd expect more out of him, actually. Really? Yeah, my guess is this next year he'll see more, even though he's going to say he'll see less. But he says he's not going for a big year. Yeah, but he can't stop himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to AA for birds. AA for birds. Does that, does that exist? I should. Is, is there a... It would be good for the families. It would be good for the families with birders? It would be. It would be. I mean, what do you, what's the, the, the most random thing that your dad's done that he's missed for a bird trip? Oh, gosh. Your dad. Yeah, what are some of the things that you've missed because you've been birding? You don't even remember. You don't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. Do you remember any that, that you've uh, missed because of birding? Um, I don't. Other than just family time. Just family time. Yeah. Because he's out grinding for birds. That's right. I don't have words for this. I met a, a family that's 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 battling this 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 passion for birds that their dad has, like passion. Like, I mean, he does not keep his eyes off looking for birds. I've noticed. I mean, it's all the time. Family the birds together, stays together, you know. <laughs> family the birds together. You can turn it off and I'll tell you a little story. Okay, I gotta turn it off so you can tell me more she bird stories. I don't even know if it's turned off, so just keep it going. <laughs> and I'll listen to the new friends. Okay. I'm, listen to my music. I'm gonna get some more live stories about the birding, so I'm gonna sign off for a little bit. Uh, but we might be back on in a little bit. This is great. Great footage. Me and Matt are continuing to talk about birding. I can't get enough of this birding. And what's the story he just told me? Well, he was trying to get a thousand. He, he got a thousand when he was on a trip in New Zealand, going up a river. It felt like it was Mach one. He was going so fast he couldn't focus on the birds because they were moving so quickly past him. And so, but that's when he that's when he saw the Harrier. But he wanted, to he wanted to cover so much ground. Like, he thought it was a good way to cover a lot of ground. I mean, no. the best, best way to cover ground, you know, for you to time and to explore a new uh, ecological zone, that being the, the river basin. <laughs> I mean, because, like you said, your dad is 74. He typically doesn't uh, do jet boats. <laughs> I mean, but see hard this. Hard on the vertebra. Hard on the vertebra, but he's so dedicated to birding that, like, he, he like, will ride a jet boat going really fast just so he can cover more ground for more bird, possible birds. And I, I think you have a photograph that I shared with you that, of him when he got 1,000 on the jet boat. Oh, yeah, that's good. Cool. His shoes are being pulled back. And that's where that photo is from, the jet boat? Yeah, he was pretty happy, pretty excited because he, 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 he knew that it was worth it. Suffering was worth it. <laughs> Special a moment was to hit your thousand bird. How'd you feel that like you got the experience that moment with your dad to experience the thousandth bird? I just wish I was you know, I was enjoying it as much as him. <laughs> I mean, you can tell he really enjoys it. I mean, a lot of people don't have like that much of a love for something. I mean, he loves birding. I mean, that is like an admirable thing. I mean his love for it. I mean, what were you telling me? You said he gets up at like, like, what's a 4.30? 4.30. What, what's, a, what's a bird trip like? Like, you were explaining to me like... Yeah, uh, bird trips are usually starting at 4.30 in the morning. You know, yeah. skipping breakfast, piling into a 15 passenger van with a bunch of other people going to the middle of nowhere, <laughs> getting out, birding all day, having a low budget meal for dinner. <laughs> a bunch of people you don't really know. They're all, they all care more about the birds than they do each other. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get up the next day to do it again. <laughs> they're paying money for it. <laughs> they're paying money and they just keep doing it. Over and over. Over and over. But they're getting birds. Yeah, they're getting birds. <laughs> I could talk to this guy, Matt, forever about his... His bird stories with his dad. I mean, I still can't believe that you guys purposely sat on the opposite side of the bus. Yeah. 
It's just so you can both scope birds. Yeah, well, it's his decision, not mine. He, oh, so this was his strategic play. Like, oh he, yeah, he, I can care less. He strategically placed you on the other side of the bus. Yes. So you could spot birds that he couldn't spot. Correct. You can only look at one side of the bus at the time. Wow. So do you think, I mean, he's, he's talking about Birds Anonymous. Do you think or do you think he needs to go to Birds Anonymous? I think he should be the founding member. Founding member of Birds Anonymous. But he also said, like, you know, a family that birds together stays together. I mean, is this, has Birdie brought you guys closer? I, I hate to admit it, but probably. Uh -huh. I think we're out of fear of his life. Uh-huh. Yeah, he might forget to eat. <laughs> he might forget to eat, did you say? Yep. So how do you think he's going to spin this birding thing to his friends when, when this video comes out? Like, how do you think he's going to spin it? He's going to think that it's just so wonderful that you understand how, how wonderful birds are that, that the baton has been passed to the next generation. <laughs> the next generation of birders? Yep. I think he thinks you're going to be the one to inherit the... the So I could I could pass the bird baton baton. Oh my gosh, this is just a riot. I just I don't even this this is gonna be a long YouTube video, but it's gonna be worth it.